Nova said she was a tragic example of a woman. I was like, a tragic example? Ooh, hey, really, girl? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap of season four, episode one, the season premiere, Queen Sugar Pleasure is Black. All right, so um, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. I know this recap is really, really late, and you have already watched all the great uh, black YouTubers, like Random TV Reviews, uh, one of my favorites, Lady Nika, doing Provost. They have already given you um, the breakdown of what this episode was about, and the fact that you are here on this channel watching it with me right now. I'm a day late and a dollar short, but you're still here. Uh, makes me feel very appreciative to have you around so i just want to thank you thank you thank you thank you all to my new subscribers each and every last one of you let's get into this recap y'all we open up with nova board alone giving a speech and i swear every time nova board alone speaks it sounds like she's in the midst of a civil rights movement she talks so eloquently and so cat unconsciously says her words and she makes sure that she enunciates certain sounds and elevate her tones at certain points and um, they teach you all this in theology school I heard I got friends that went to theology school how to inflect certain points certain points in your, your voice when you're saying certain words and she's sitting here on this platform talking about unveiling her family secrets because she's had the secrets too long and now it's time for her to pull pull down the covers Throw away the sheets. Remember, no more sheets. Remember that? We need to buy them. No more sheets. Nova Board Alone is pulling off the curtains and the sheets of all the secrets that our family has had, that they've been hiding all their truth behind. That's what this book is going to be about. Now, we already knew that it was going to be a doozy because her best friend last season was like, girl, have your family seen this? At this point in time, nobody has seen it. And it's only two weeks left of publication. I was like, wait a minute now, Nova. Come on now. <laughs> Your publisher got high hopes for this. Everybody is raving about it, which tells me you are spilling the beans. That's the only time a publisher gets so excited about a new author coming out with something because they tell us some shit that they ain't supposed to tell. Yes, it's about the stardom, ain't it? That's what they said this is for. You want this stardom, right? I think that was her, um, might have been her, her, her assistant. At the time, it's like, this is this about stardom, right? I know it's about stardom. Your family should be all right. They do know about the book, right? And I was like, yeah, they know I'm writing it. They don't know what's in it. I mean, not really. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm like, girl, if you're so worried about what's in that book, then maybe you shouldn't have wrote it. If it's bothering you, stressing you, turning your hairs gray like that, then maybe you should have think twice about what you put in that book. That's why I won't write my family story. Everybody keep asking me to write a memoir. No, ma'am, Pam. Y'all get enough of my shit right here on this damn channel. Y'all don't need the tea, 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 tea. Y'all don't need the black tea. Y'all getting the green leaf tea right now when I'm on this channel. Y'all be shocked at the shit I say on that. No, you're not getting the black tea. Mm -mm. Not putting it in the book. Not with my name on it. It may come out as a pseudonym, but it ain't going to say poetry in motion on it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. C for D, C or E, ain't none of them going to be connected to it. Well, anyway, because <clears throat> Aunt Vi was already pissed about what she wrote about Ermis before and his suicidal tendencies. You know, trying to make her brother look like he's weak. So you know Aunt Vi is not going to have whatever the hell you got in this doggone book. It's not going to go over too well. And you know it. You feel it in your bones, Nova. You feel it in your bones. Well, anyway, don't drink up that liquor. Go on, toss them back, girl. Ease that guilt at the bottom of that glass and prepare for that backlash. Prepare for it. So, Charlie and Romero, they still getting real nice and cozy together. They all close together. They on a trip. Okay, so this time they didn't come back just a couple months later. It's when we ended last time, I want to say it was like at the end of Christmas. And now it's harvest time. Harvest time is always around August. Um... 
she away on vacay with Romero. They getting the couples massaged together. He come up and oil her up and everything too. And I was like, whoa, y'all done got real cozy. Like, look at you, Charlie. Look at you, Charlie. She like, you know, but it is hard time. I can't stay too long. I can't, you know, be stuck down here in Wonderland with you too long. I got to get back to reality soon. So, um, Vi and, and Wood, they done came back from their honeymoon. They went to Thailand. For some reason, I could have sworn they were supposed to go going to Italy. I could have sworn, but maybe he took her a few places. Because you know, no, Wood had got that settlement check from the oil rig explosion. So they went to Thailand, and she done tasted all these different, you know, exotic foods over there. So now I, Vi thinks she got a world palate. It's an international palate. And she want to put some international flavors up in Aunt Vi's prize pies. And Dinah. Wood is like, come on now. They, they, you know, damn well. Everybody want us fried chicken and hamburgers up in that joint. She's like, well, they're going to have to uh, come to my standards. It, on a business side of things, that's stupid. You need a target audience. And you need a product that you're going to present to that target audience. And if they ain't ready for Vice Prize Pies Italian Palette food, they ain't going to want to eat it. I don't care who you are. I don't care that your name is on it. Come on now, think smarter. She's like, well, baby, maybe we need to have a tie night then, something like that. I, I just don't see Vice Prize Pies and Ty marrying each other. They just don't seem like they, they it don't seem, seem like it's a, a good meal option for me. Not to, no, no, they don't sound good. Anyway, they about to open up this, y'all know I hate that name, Vice Prize Pies. And Dinah. Y'all can't think of nothing better than that by now. It is Vice Prize Pies. And she went, oh, Lord, she want to keep saying it. Like, goodness gracious. Mm. Ra is a free, free man. Now. He done got them papers, baby. He said he'd been waiting a few months. To, the state been kind of backed up. He got his letter. It didn't come certified mail, which I was surprised about. It says, hey, hey, dog, this serves as your notice. You free. You know, you ain't got to come and get pee in the cup no more. Ain't nobody got to come check up on you. You can hang around your old failing friends that you used to. You was a free man now, right? I know that feel good. I know that feel good. He took off on that run. Ralph Angel done bulked up some. I was like, look at your body, Kofi. Ooh, yes, child. He ran. Then when he stopped, I realized he didn't run that motherfucking fall. <laughs> Because <laughs> Benny and them went too far behind him. Benny's still working there on the farm. He got a new dude. I want to say his name is Enrique. If I were mistaken, I thought that was, it might have been Ignacio. Something with an eh. Is it Enrique or Ignacio? But Benny finna show him the ropes and or whatever. So they about to get the farm together. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Um. So uh, what they going to do is um have a second line for Aunt um, Vi. Now the grand opening. I told y'all, boy, I like that second line thing. Mm -mm 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 -mm. If y'all watch my Real Housewives of Potomac review, and Giselle had that second line for her daddy's birthday. Yes, I'm by doing one for the prize pies and diner. They weren't getting it as hard as they was in Real Housewives. They weren't getting it as hard as New Orleans folks know how to get down. St. Joe's a little bit just, oh, they just going to shuffle. It is hot in the motherfucker out here. We're going to make it on down there. And I was surprised that everybody wore different colors because usually in the second line, they wear the same color outfit. But that's okay. We want this to be a vibrant moment. You know? So go on, get your... Have your tubes. Ah. Yeah. Everybody come on in. Get your fans. Hey, your umbrellas and yes. Come on through. Come on through. I'm not from New Orleans. I just love the flavor. I just love the flavor. Anyway. I was loving that color on Aunt Vi's wig. I was like, come through wig, come through wig. You know what I'm saying? Well, the diner don't look like much of nothing. It still look like the same restaurant <laughs> that it was. It don't look like much of nothing, but it's hers. That's all I can say. It is hers. Um, Ralph O.P.O. come through. His homeboy, the copper dude, come through. Um, and they want to put an idea in his head for him to take on some more feelings on the farm. What a great idea. You can be their center of hope. You know what I'm saying? He was like, uh, we good. We already got Benny. You know, no, you can do it for more. Like you could be the second chance for him. 
Now, we had a place back home like that. Larry Rice. Larry Rice um, took a lot of drug users off the street and gave them housing and a place to stay. And uh, that's the same thing, housing and a place to stay. Housing and food or whatever. But they had to work for it. And they had to go work on this farm. Everybody said the farm work was slave work. That's pretty much because it was hard work. They weren't getting paid no money for it. They was getting free housing, food and clothing and everything. And um, that's the difference between what him and Ralph Angel be doing. Ralph Angel be paying him. But he's taking in, they want him to take in felons. Like, look how good that make you feel inside. Ralph Angel don't look like this too. He's too sure about that. Like, mm. Come on, man. That's that's a lot. That's a lot putting a lot on me. That's putting a lot on me. Well, at the love shindig, you know, Charlie is learning um that you know Francis is Boudreau. Francis is Boudreau. Franny B, that's what I'm gonna call her. She been kicking down the councilman some money into the campaign. A whole lot of money left and right. A whole lot of money. And Charlie didn't know shit about it because of why? She has a very small percentage of the ownership of Landry Enterprises. And she not even allowed to sit in on the board meetings. Remember, she got got last season. She thought she was going to um, be the board father and, you know, take him to the mattresses and it got played. Fanny, Franny B played the fuck out of her. Now, Franny B got most of the shares and she ain't got no damn voice. I thought you was going to take them down from the inside out. You ain't doing shit with them, Charlie. You ain't. It's months later. Now you just an employee motherfucking E of the people that you can't even stand. That's what you are. They didn't show Jacob. Ain't that his name? The white boy, Jacob Landry? They didn't show him. I was surprised. Anyway, um, Dola came in and Vi still has no love for her. None at all, baby. Um, Dola, she know, being cordial, gave her a gift. She was like, oh, hey, yeah, that's plenty of food. Now you can make your plate uh, before you leave. That was where her way of saying, you not welcome to be here. Make you a go play, baby. Bye. She didn't even say thank you for the gift. She just took it and said, oh, okay. And then when Dola walked off to go make a plate, she going to hand the wood like, here, take this shit. I don't want that. Ryan was watching it, and he's like, I'm fine. Come on, you didn't have to do her like that. She trying. She trying. She's like, what? I took the gift. I said hi. Offered her a plate. What more you want me to do? He's like, look, she, we doing good. We in a good place. We raised them blue together. You know, co-parenting. But I say, really? You need to raise your standards, bro. If that's what you think is good parenting. Y'all ain't going to win no parenting awards with that. I was like, really? I'm like, damn, what? Really? As if Ra was raised in a pristine environment. Like, come on. Come on. What if I still don't I still don't get it. I still don't get it. But I'm still Team Dwala, y'all. Uh, y'all still be mad at me this season too. As of right now, I'm still Team Dwala. Well, um Dwala needs uh, Ra to you know, have blue a little longer than normal this time because she got a date. Ron like what a date? Yeah, I got a date. He's like, well, I know we said we was gonna be moving on and this, that, and the third, but damn, I, I didn't think I was gonna know it like that. Yeah, I got a date. I hope we see his, her date too. I really do. I want to see her date. I'm, I'm still interested in Dollar being the main part of this storyline. I really am. I like her better than I like Nova. I do. Yeah, I know I was hating no from season one and I didn't get too much love for her growing going on. I just started to tolerate her. But I always I like Dollar better than Nova. Um, but I told y'all in my P and T V that Tevin Campbell was gonna be on this show. If y'all didn't know that from my P and T V, that means y'all ain't been watching my P and TVs. Why the hell y'all ain't been watching my P and TVs? My P and TVs is all TV shows and movie news. It's all this stuff out now. And you might get a gossip about the actor or actresses in the shows. But I mentioned that Tevin Campbell in the P and TV. I'm going to link it up one of the places. So y'all can go back and watch that and know that Tevin Campbell was going to be on this show and why he's appearing. And um, Wood has said he got this dude that was going to sing at the doggone grand opening was going to blow her socks off. That be Tevin. See, I didn't know what Tevin was going to do. I was like, is he going to act? What he going to do? He sang. Tevin stayed in his lane and he sang. I didn't realize Tevin Campbell had such a big gap. <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. But uh, yeah, I was personally hoping for Can We Talk. You know, because he's like, you know, everybody say you love this song. I was like, yes, can we talk for a minute? 
Girl, I want to know your name. But he didn't sing that. He sang Amazing Grace. I mean, he sang it though. He still, the boy still can sing. He still sang that song, but he sung Amazing Grace. And I thought that was, he just did something better. Oh, something more lively. Oh. Amazing Grace. They sing it for everything. Funerals, bar mitzvahs, baptisms. Get your driver's license. They say Amazing Grace. I was like, come on. But he sang the song. He sang the song. But <laughs> it always kills me that when they done when they record these shows, they they do the dance music separate from when they actually dancing. So they be all like this. You know what I'm saying? And the music be on a whole nother level. And I can clearly tell it that they not dancing to the song that they we actually hearing. They always lay the music track down later. That's what they do, y'all, if y'all didn't know that. Anyway, so a neighbor rolled up the Nova like, hey girl, hey. I got a cousin up in the NYC, and she told me she saw your billboard about your book coming out in a couple weeks. No, Proctor, like, really? I don't know nobody know about that. Really? And no wood over there, ear hustling like a mug. She's like, what's in the book, girl? Tell me. Oh, uh, what? And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Nova, I thought that everybody knew, because Proctor, Wood, they all seem shocked that you got this book coming out in a couple, couple weeks. I thought the family knew at least that it was coming out in a couple weeks. Baby, no. Mm -mm. No, girl, you got me worried. You got me worried. You got me worried. Put too much of your family business in there. I feel it already. How much of it is it about her, though? Is she in there talking about her sleeping with that married cop? Mm -hmm. And about that using that cop to help get the uh, two sweet out of jail and um, the drugs that she been selling to the neighborhood kids. And that's why he was locked up in the first place. And, you know, the married cop got a wife. And did, how did, she, did she put any of that business in her? I wonder. Mm. Okay. So, Wood is like, hey, what's in the book? She's like, what you talking about? She said, look here, I, look, I take my vows very seriously. And one of them is to love and protect my wife, and I will, will protect her, even from family. What's in the doggone book? You ain't never been one to be shy. You ain't never been one to not want to share what the heck you doing. What's in the book, Nova? What's in the book? She didn't want to say it. She didn't want to say it at all. And I keep saying, girl, if you're having this much pause, then maybe you shouldn't have wrote it. Or at least maybe should not have published it. You know what I'm saying? The writing didn't have it come out after you die. Some shit like that. I don't know. But um, now she can't sleep at night. Can't sleep at night. Toss and turn. Listen to my telephone. That's her. That's Nova. She tossing and turning. And she dreaming of herself as a little girl. You know, her, Charlie, and, uh, and Ralph Angel out there playing. And um, they go to run off. And then she falling. When she stand back up, everybody grown. And they standing there all in white just looking at her crazy. And she wake up. <sighs> Breathing all hard and shit. You know what I'm saying? You're feeling guilty. Your conscience eating you away in the middle of the night. Ain't it no boy low? Ain't it, girl? Yo, I swear I did not realize that Michael was not in this episode at all until Romero said Michael be coming home from soon, coming home from school soon. It's the end of the summer. Well, they at the point now in their relationship they want to know if Michael gonna get introduced to him. You know, are we there? Charlie had said something. You know, that's what I love about you. Then she changed it and said, you know, that's what I admire about you. You know, the fact that he's so caring and considerate and thinking about you know how their relationship will affect the rest of the, uh, the family and everything like that. So, like I said, things seem to be moving along with them. So, we need all the new folks, folks in this episode. Like I said, in my PNTV, if you have watched it, we was going to have two new characters. Now, Romero is now a recurring character on the show, which means he's going to be there all the time. All the time. Um, and this new lady, who I don't forgot her fucking name already. I know her real name, but her character name, I think it was Deja. And her daughter, who I said her name was Joy. Because it's spelled J-O-I. She keep calling her Joy. So I guess the, the little girl name is Joy. Uh, okay, they all at this, uh, in this episode. So Blue and Ronnie out at this little, uh, I want to say it was kind of like, 
a little fair. You know, they toss around this little football and this little girl catch the football. I'm like, yes, I got that fool. Like, what, 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 what? Blue, you couldn't catch it, what? Blue, like, all right, that's cool. Get my ball back. I ain't giving your ball back. She was about to punk Blue over that damn ball. So Ralph Angel come up and the girl mama come up and they y'all get acquainted and all of a sudden Blue, like, hey, let's go run off and go do something else. So they go play together. Just that quick, they became friends. Now that she was about to bully his ass over that damn football. I didn't think that was cute. And I didn't think that it was cute that nobody didn't check her little ass for that too either. Can we take somebody else's shit and try to claim it as yours? Like put her in a damn place. Don't let that shit start at that young age. Come on now. But I this is how I don't know what it is in this damn age that everybody is so hard up that they, the women gotta um we gotta run the world, which we do already. We, we gotta run the world that we now we gotta act like assholes like the men do. <laughs> I guess that's a part of running the world, being an asshole as well. Somebody should have said something to that little girl. Say somebody, it's no, it's not okay, Rob. It's not okay. Because Rob was like, ah, oh, it's all right. No, it ain't all right. It ain't, it ain't all right. Well, him and um, the mama, they get into a conversation. And she was like, you know, it's hard for her to make friends because everybody thinks she a little tomboy. And Rob was like, yeah, I understand. My, my son likes to play with dolls. And then they got, they connected. They connected. Now, when I thought... When they introduced her, when I find, learned about her coming to the show, I thought that she was going to be a love interest for Nova because she's a lawyer, um, which we didn't find that out in this first season, but I told y'all in my PNTV, she's a lawyer and she's supposed to be an activist. And that seems like Nova's type. Now, this woman here is stunningly gorgeous to me with hair. She's cut all her hair off. Now, I've seen her. She used to be on... The Good Fight, which comes on CBS All Access. Good show for me. Very good show. I love it. It's a spinoff of The Good Wife. Love it. She was on the first season of that. And to me, she looks so much better with hair. Um, without hair, she looks homely. Definitely not Ralph Angel's type. But the writer, the show writers may have been listening to all the fans complain about how colorist Ralph Angel is. So now not only are they going to give him a chocolate sister, they're going to give him a chocolate sister with a low-cut fade who ain't a fashionista. She very homely looking. Look out here looking like a dark skin Alicia Keys. Because Alicia Keys looking horrible these days. She is. Anyway. <laughs> like I said. Um, I talked about that already. I talked about that already. So Nova. She nervous now about this fucking book. She really need to let everybody know what's really going on. So she swing by Charlie's work unexpectedly. But Charlie busy as a motherfucker. You know, like I say, it's harvest time. She can't entertain her sister right now. I will catch up with you after the harvest is over. That's a long motherfucking time, sis. Damn, really? After the harvest is over? No, it's like, look, I really need you to read this book. I want to give it to you. She said, okay, I will. I will, you know. Girl, Charlie, you better read that book. Charlie had put it on the desk. I was thinking somebody going to read that motherfucking book at work and then be like, Charlie, girl, did you see what Nova put in her? That's what I was thinking was going to happen. But she left that copy right there. She swing by Rod next. Mm. Leave him one too. She didn't want to put it in his hand right there. I'm going to put it in the desk. And her. He said, all right, that's fine. That's cool. Go on, do that. Go on, do that. I wonder who's going to be the first one to read it. Who's going to be the first one to read it? Well, Charlie is up here receiving a groundbreaking award. And she opens up her speech about women sticking together. You know, they pan the room. There was this one Caucasian lady sitting in the center who wasn't clapping. I said, it's got to be trouble. Trouble. Trouble is coming. Child. She the first one to read that damn book. She dropped all the dimes, all the tea. She spilled all the beans. The Nova let loose. All of Charlie's involvement with that sex scandal with Davis. How she paid off that woman so she could make Davis's charges go away. Nova, bitch. Nova. <laughs> no, you didn't, girl. Yes, you did. Bitch, really? Charlie, like, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, she be trying to save face. She really usually good in the face of media, you know. And she say, okay. Play dumb if you want to. I'm going to give you an outline. I'm going to break it down for you. Play by play, blow by blow. Right at the awards banquet. Everybody sitting there with their cell phones on Facebook Live, Snapchat, Instagram Live. They doing it all. They probably was YouTube Live too. They was doing all of that right there. Charlie is gobsmacked. Like, 
I am too, girl. I am too. When she starts saying all the shit that Nova said about her sister, baby, in layman's term, Nova say Charlie ain't shit as a person or a human being. That's basically what she said. The clock crowd was sipping all that tea with the honey, honey. They were sipping it. All Charlie can say is no comment. Um, the reporter tore her up. Nova said she was a tragic example of a woman. I was like a tragic example. Ooh, -wee. really, girl? Really good. Charlie make it back home. Toss her back some vino. Then she grabbed her another glass and she sit down and start to read. Baby, the first page punched her in the face so hard that she never got that glass to her lips. Charlie had to sit there, put that glass down, adjust, and start the reading. She was like, <laughs> like, really? Right? I said, she picked up the phone, called Ralph Angel. Hey, in the middle of the night, he's like, duh, so I'm asleep. Hey, I know, whatever, whatever. Get up. Did you read that book yet? Did Nova bring a copy by? He said, yeah, I ain't got to it yet. She said, don't. Promise me that you not going to read it. He was like, what the, what the heck is this about? Promise me, Ralph Angel, that you ain't finna read that book. I right, fine, I promise. She say, fine, I'm on my way right now. It's the middle of the night. Who gonna read the book? Of course you gonna read the book. Cause you just call me in the middle of the night, waking me up, talking about don't read it. Oh no, girl, I'm finna read this book. I'm finna read it, honey. So, who was it the middle of the night? It had to be early morning because when Charlie went out on the road, it was daylight. Charlie went on that road. She was trying to call her lawyer on the phone like, hey, hey, I'm going to need a cease and desist on my sister's book ASAP. But the lawyer hadn't answered the phone, so it was on the voicemail. Call me when you get this message and you better call me promptly. You know what I'm saying? Aunt Vi is going to blow a motherfucking gasket, baby. Charlie, like I said, was trying to get there and trying to get there quick. Wood. No snuck by the restaurant. It's, the crowd is clamoring and everything, and she was able to dip in without nobody seeing her. As you know, Wood out there working the floor. They get inside. She get back in the back office, and she said it calmly on the desk and skedaddled her little way on out there. Well, it's the end of the night. Wood walk in the office and see the book. He closed the door like, oh, if I can't come in here right now and see this. He closed the book and started thumbing through it like, what's the section that says by oh, violence? I thought, was there a V? There's a V. Pause. Let me read right here. He started reading through that book, hunty. Like, no, 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 no. That ain't what she said. That ain't what she said. He went right to the meat and potatoes. Where Nova said that Aunt Vi up her putting on a front like she a strong woman, but that's something that she never has been. Whoo! She far from a strong black woman. I was like, wait a damn minute now. Is that what you said about your auntie? <laughs> it's about to be ugly for you, Nova. It's about to be ugly for you, girl. So, Ra, like me. Didn't wait for Charlie, baby. He's sitting there with that ugly face on. Mm -mm, baby, hey. It's about to get ugly. It's about to get... Nova. Nova is sitting there at Ernest's grave. Like I know, I'm scared, daddy. That everybody not going to understand why I did what I did. But I pray it helps us to see ourselves better and to do better. We've had too many secrets in my life. And it's time for us to be free. Free, free. Set them free. You know how I feel. Look. Free, free. Lord, give me the strength to see this through. I said, baby, he's going to need to give you a little bit more of the strength. Because they're going to come for that ass with a vengeance. they going to come for that. You're going to need to put on his sword and shield. Down by the riverside. You're going to have to do all that, girl. Because the strength, you're going to need a little bit more than strength. You might need some Nike shoes too, so you can run. There's something you gonna need something else than that strength. This was a doozy of an opener. It was all just it was just a climatic build up, baby. Just a build up. You know, I said before that um, Queen Sugar to me is the modern day good times. 
A lot of people may not agree, but I loved good times. I'm sitting here looking like Walona right now. I'm just Walona, Walona, Walona. I'm sitting there looking like her right now, but I loved good times, but they always had bad times. Something always went wrong with that fucking family. And I'd be damned if it ain't the same thing for the borderlands. This just your too now, y'all. I mean, damn, it's just too. Y'all got a lot of shit going on for this family. And it just keep piling on one after another. I say, they, they done did it though. They done made sure that Nova was hated from the jump. They made sure she was hated from the jump. Her holier than righteous than self down. You know, I can't do no wrong because I'm boom, shamaloom, bop, 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 bam. You know, got to, you know, she always very critical of everything and everybody. And even though she, you know, got a, I wonder how much in that book about her. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode if y'all still watching me and waiting on me to put it up. I appreciate you being here. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And hopefully next week, y'all see I'm getting over my cold. I still got a little congestion. It's still a little swollen up right there. Hopefully next week I will be on time, on time, and you know, we get the video done the right way. All right? Thank y'all for coming again. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.